Hi, this is Franz Cantor and Jim Bridges, and I'm the president of the Australian Cartoon Museum, and here we are today down at downtown Docklands, Melbourne, at the Australian Cartoon Museum, and today we're going to do a very important book, Sapiens. Sapiens. It's a great book. Are we it... going to do that? We're going to read it to you. No, this is... We're going to read this. Look at this. You like reading or like writing? Yeah, come on. I read, I read reading, but I don't that read like writing. Right. right, good. I'm glad you got that out of the room. But today we're going to do the... The, the, um... the comic, the graphic novel. Yeah. And but it's, it's quite it's... thick. Yeah, and it's um, very different to the book. Um, it's very different to the book. And it's only volume one because the book's so big. Yeah. Um, and it's now November and apparently in Australia the second volume's coming out now but every time I go to the shop it's not there yet because of COVID and because of other things. So anyway, we'll, right. be, we'll be back to you in a second, okay? Okay. Bye-bye. Every one of you watching this screen, look out. Anything can happen in the next half hour. What did I tell you about cartoons? They've got a lot of brains, and they've got a lot of chutzpah. Tell me how comic books make you feel, Dave. Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me sure. We are back again. Yeah, now, this book is really important because you know, we're coming out of COVID, or God knows if we are or not. Um, and also because of the the, 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 the robots are coming, um, Ooh. everything's gonna be taken over by the computers. But not Daleks. We're at a stage in time where this book is really interesting because it gives you a total uh, world's eye view from the beginning, the brief history of humankind, and it goes into the future as well. And it's, so a, is, it's, as, it's a bestseller. It's a bestseller. It's a huge bestseller. This is, this is and, as accurate as Alvin Toffler's... Um, yes. Actually, I think it's an even more important Future book Shock. than Future Shock. Hmm. Much more important. And also, the other thing is that so many people have read it. And this guy, Yuval Noah Harari, mm -hmm. he is all over, the net, all over the net. Everybody wants to... All over the interwebs. Everywhere. You know, and he's talking his head off about all sorts of stuff, including the future, the future of everything, the future of history, the future of religions, etc., um, the future of computers, even. You Yuval know. Noah Harari, Sapiens, a graphic history yes. so, of humankind. And it's all about us, folks. Beautiful. Sapiens, we're sapiens. So let's get into it. And the thumbprint, yes. Um, and uh, it's uh, so it's um, Jonathan Cape London. Mm. And David Van, Van der Moulin. Van der Moulin, Daniel Castaneve. Yes. Now, they're the people who actually reconstituted it. Because, you see, this book is a history book. Mm. But, you know, they had to, they had to personalise it and turn it into a narrative. Mm. So they've turned it into... This is the overall starting from, you know, beginning of time up, the, up to the future. Mm. Yeah. And here he is. Here's the author himself giving you the beginning of the world. He's sitting in his chair, blah, 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 you know? Yeah. And then he talks about, you know, the beginning of the earth, cave art, and uh, he, he just... Well, that's a jump from amoebas to cave art. Yes, well, if if if, um, if 2001 can do it, why can't he? Hmm. Anyway, so, and he just gives... 2001. He gives a, a, a brief... Monkey people. This is a brief, in, uh, you know, yeah. Up to here, and he's got what? He's got elephants, uh, <laughs> the Republic symbol on the moon, you know. Um, and so this is a brief introduction. Yeah. And he talks about the different types of people, and he he uses cards. This is a card game. Mm. So he uses um, this the, the Role people. Playing. Yeah, the people who do this book. Yeah. Use a lot of uh, uh, um, popular culture. For instance, he's in the book, yeah. and he's got a niece. Now she doesn't exist in in, in the novel, uh, in in the book. And then there's this character here who's who's a, she's um, an expert on genetics, mm -hmm. and they go to this meeting, which is not in the book, but all the facts that are in the book are turned into a story form. Right. So well, it's not reconstituted; it's rewritten. 
Yes, basically, yeah. Yeah, but so it's, it's a visual narrative. Yeah, um, and so, you know... It's you, very difficult in comics because essentially what you're looking here is a slideshow with a narrator. Yes. And uh, that's difficult in comics to pull off. So some key elements here... Um, yeah, but, it, but the whole book's not like that. They keep on it, changing it so you don't get well, bored. So, well, yeah, but you have to keep this sort of running. Yeah. It's not just a commentary. Yeah. It is a, you know, a relationship. Uh, you learn something, the backstory yeah. of the narrator and his family and things like that. So, so it's so, not all dry. So he talks about that we're close to related to, to, to chimpanzees, and then he calls... Chimpanzees. Calls, yeah. Well, <laughs> okay. is, is that plural? <laughs> anyway, so he goes up here, and here he's saying... And this one is our grandmother, right? He's holding, oh. you know, so... the a granny! And then Evolution, the greatest show on Earth. He talks about it, season one, uh, previously in season three. So it turns it into like a... Um, what's that show on, on the island that they're all running around? Survivor. He turns it into a Survivor sort of show. So, oh. So, you see... Um, Oh, with a with a, a so all these, with a yeah, mic. all these different people, all these different types are going to rush off, and who's going to survive? We right. already know that sapiens are going to win the race, right? Right. So th that's how they get their facts across, you know. So against the the hunky Neanderthals, yeah, and uh, the Australopithecuses, yeah. etc. So meanwhile, back at the ranch. These characters again, the author and his niece and, and this uh, uh, Indian woman who's a, uh, a genetics expert, mm. they go through this sort of uh, graveyard. This looks so, like a beautiful read. Uh, actually, it's great. It's really great. And then he talks about brains, yeah, right? Brain capacity. And then her brain gets bigger and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And then um, there's this comic called Prehistoric Bill. Right. It cuts to a comic and it has and it's all got the... little dots. Yeah, it's like got all the, the dots. So Prehistoric Bill... Half tone. With he, he goes pattern. from he goes from being uh, you know this to here he is uh, two million years later he's driving his uh, you know and he's shooting everything and it, the actually overall thing is that the, the sapiens um, and see she's that it cuts to back she's finished reading the comic and they're back to reality you know yeah. well, the reality of the comic and and she's talking about ev evolution so she talks about rabbits here. And then, um, and then she's going on all fours, talking about, and so she stands up, and her head's getting bigger. And she's talking about how the brains got bigger, you know, because um, they were standing. Um, and then it goes on to about uh, early days when they started. Um, people stopped hunter gathering. They actually, you know, they stayed in one place and they they, they built things. Mm. So prehistoric Bill comes back again as the comic. Yeah. Right? So they keep on breaking up the narrative with all these different types of um, visual stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, and then they go to the zoo and they're walking around and they talk about different stuff. Origin of the species. Yeah, and here, like, you have all this sort of stuff. Um, there's the War of the Worlds and there's this great big bird just uh, claw about to grab the people. Yeah. And they keep on having all sorts of stuff oh, in look, here. Fake ads. Yeah. Light the flame. This is about the beginning of fire. So ah. they turn into a fake ad. You know, friction. You know, what's that? Percussion. Percussion. Yeah, ching, and ching, you know, ching. an effective deterrent to unwelcome guests. Yeah, just sticks the fire out there. Yeah, and um, and then he talks about how see that once you start like that's Tarzan, but he's a cook. Yeah, but that oh, that's right. There is a lot of that in it. So he's he's now cooking his food. He's not eating it raw. And, yeah, and then it cuts straight to a master chef. You know. Yeah. So this is you know, <laughs> he's got a beautiful brain. He's got a perfect smile. He's got a six pack ab. And he's got a flat tummy and he cooks, mm. you know. Just a touch of gayness in that shot. And then, of course, he just keeps on comparing the animals all the time with the humans. And we talk about how everybody started to move out of Africa, all right? Mm. Um, and um, be being Australians, I like the book because he mentions the Australian Aboriginals a hell of a lot. Um, and then, see, here, look at this. Yep. You know, great. And look at this, look at this. And then look at this. It's American Gothic. That's look, uh, and Brockner's. Look, yeah. Brockner. And look, you've got you've got that famous photo, and they've got Iwo the Vinci's. They've got Da Vinci's man in um, in the circle in the square. And then you've got that's from the the the, the, the film that uh, Lenny Riefenstein made about the Olympics. Ah. So the, and there's there's um, there's Nighthawks. Yeah. So yeah. And now she's, she's nice. now in a television station talking about her book. Yeah. Right. And it, you know. Um, and there's, uh, yeah, 
it's anyway she goes on talks about she's being interviewed and then they actually go back in time and right. they, this is what they, they lived like you know um, and of course <laughs> it keeps on using all sorts of art references and yes pop culture references yeah so you know there's there's Picasso there's um, oh, what's his name Corbus no it's not him and there's Marx, and there's the Planet of the Apes, you know. Yeah. And there's there, there's um, Darwin. Darwin as a half monkey, you know, j- j- jumping through poop, poop uh, hoops. Yeah. And hoops. and it jumps back to the the you know the whole the concept of the Bible. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then he goes back to how they all came out of um, Africa, and they all crossed land here. bridges. Yes, and... that's right. Um, and see, this is a famous um, painting by Friedrich. Of the bloke, the German romantic standing in the yeah, and but that's that's the author, and then yeah. it, then it cuts to the super sapiens coming soon in sapiens. So it's another comic about super sapiens. Yeah, and I love all the printing; it's just great. Mm. Makes it difficult to see the line work, though. That's the yeah. trade-off. Well, yeah, but he's he deliberately doing that to mm. sort of you know to push it. So masters of fiction, and basically, so they, he goes to London. I think this is London. Is it London? Yeah, it's London. And this is a, they've got all these running gags about technology. Yeah. This is, this is the, this is the, the the number for the Wi-Fi. Like, it just (laughs) goes on. It's all these jokes, you know. See this one? No smoking. Um, And he's got lots of this stuff. (laughs) Um, And then um, he talks about how the reason, um, the reason uh, we actually survived uh, better than all the other uh, monkeys is because we, we communicate better to each other mm. and we all tell lies to each other and we all believe those lies. So for, for, for he talks about religion is a lie and he talks about how money is a lie mm. and how corporations... Well, they're abstract, aren't they? Yeah, they're not real. They're, they're, they're not yeah. tundra, they're not grass, they're not rocks. They're not food. And so people believed it. So if you're a Christian, you would work with Christians even though you didn't know them. But the animal... Uh, Kingdom. Is it they only, thing, they guess, only, they, they, they'll only work with you if if they know you personally. So this is why sapiens moved on, you know, because they they believe. And it talks about how corporations grew, how yeah. money grew. This, this is basically how it, how um, um, chimpanzees, chimpanzees communicate to each other. Yeah. But I mean, um, we don't have to know other Christians or or Muslims or. Um, animators to be able to communicate you know we don't yeah. even know them the personally pe- people are very strange yes. animals uh, there's nothing like them in the no comparison so that's based on a famous painting of all the, mm. the monkeys in, in the parliament house you know mm. and then there's all this it's just it's an incredible book and it goes for so much yeah. um so he's back in london he, so he's been in london the whole time but yeah. he, he's talking about what what's it says einstein. Oh, einstein putting up his nobel prize and breaking his uh, busting his finger on, you know, on putting on. And then I go visit this guy who's an expert on animal behaviour. Mm. And he's also talks about gossiping, how they actually, all these uh, academics gossip amongst each other. Yeah, the academics. Yeah, because he's an academic, you know, and uh, and, and, and how uh, a lot of the science, when scientists get together, they don't talk so much about science, they just gossip. Mm. Um, and this is the breaking news, Brad and Angela, the break up. And he's talking about um, evolution of, of relationships, mm. and then there's this old oh, it's the Chinese, rock well. yeah, which is the Chinese whisper story. How mm. it, it, you how know, it changes. Yeah, so <laughs> that's about human communication. Mm. And then he talks about how um, uh, five close friends, right? Yeah, you know each other, and there's a hundred, five hundred, and then four hundred, four thousand people you would recognise in the street. So humans can actually recognise up to four thousand. 500 people, and be, but whereas animals can't do that. Anyway, no. the point is, um, animals aren't going to communicate with each other until they know you personally. Whereas humans, you know, they can without knowing you. And then it turns into this super guy. So here he is here, this super guy. Mm. So we get into um, super. He's Virtual um, reality. Yeah. Goals. And like like <laughs> throwing bananas at him. They use bananas a lot in this because it's. Um, uh, it's a symbol it's of, of, of evolving. Yeah, Matrix, and here's, here's Michelangelo. Why is the banana a symbol of evolving? Oh, because the monkeys ate them. 
and they talk about they, so bananas they talk about food. bananas. At, well, they talk about bananas like, for instance, one of his talks on on the, the net is um, bananas to uh, uh, pajamas. No, bananas to um, it, it's a symbol of of uh, monkeys and the past. You know, bananas. You know. Okay. Yes, and here, so bang bang, you've got look, you've got the cavemen. This starts talking about um, they found this lion guy, mm. and then they a the, lion goddess, I think. He, he, I don't, I don't think it's a goddess. Anyway, the point is, then it goes through these cultures, mm. um, and then uh, he talks about how the lion. Nice, see, uh, see, the lion open is open style. Li I quite like the, oh, there's Fred Flintstone. <laughs> yes, yeah, see, the lion Flintstone. is actually on this car. Because yeah. I forget what company it was. Daimler. Is it Daimler? Not Holden. God, this is international, lad. Anyway, so here's the bloke who originally built the car, right? right? So they go back in time and they talk about symbols, using symbols, using icons, yeah. and how they represent things. Yeah. Like like the dollar, you know? And so he he actually goes back, this is the bloke from the future, and he's talking to the bloke who invented the car in the first place. And then he oh. talks about how they built the whole corporation. And, and how he built up his business because um, it was just a lie, you know. I mean, it's just it's it's not a lie. It's just it's a, it's a story. It's a story, and um, it talks about the law and how business is done. They're just stories that we all believe in, and if we didn't believe in, it, everything would crumble. It's a nice style. It's a, yeah. what they call lean clair, which is clean line. Like yes, French it's style. well, it's a European style. Yeah. And then he talks about these. Icons. icons. We all represent, you know, they all know what they, they represent. Yeah. Um, and you so there's a lot of time travelling going on mm. to explain the history, whereas, whereas in this book... You know what I'm also this book's just a impressed straight history with is book. the colour scheme as well. Yes. It's very beautifully um, designed. Yeah. Each of the chapters have their own colour palette. Yeah. It's very interesting. Green and red. And yeah. so... So basically, these are all the fiction stories. There's the Iron Kaiser, there's Captain Dollar, there's Lady Liberty, um, there's the corporations, there's the Lion Man who was the original cave guy, and there's Sky Man, you know, all these, all these are fiction stories. Um, so the law, money, country, and... and uh, that Lion Lady again. Yeah, so they're all, they're all the fiction. Leg. They're all stories mm. that we believe, and therefore, because we believe them, we can communicate. Right. So basically, the stories that we're we're close to, like, that they connect us. Yes. Uh, it's so, a cultural. Yes. So, for instance, rather than a familial. He, he talks about religion, saying it's all made up, but mm. people want it to be uh, to believe in something, so they create the story. You know. Yeah. To back it up. Yeah. Make it more complex and interesting. Yes. Anyway, he starts, he, he travels all over, see the author, here he is, he travels yeah, all over the again. world, he takes his niece sometimes with him, Yeah. and um, there's, there's, that's Jobs, isn't it? Steve, baby. So you've got Steve Jobs next to Lennon, next to the famous painting uh, representing freedom, and uh, what is this? Rock and roll or something, I don't know. So you've got all this, he, he just, because he's a historian, and but yeah. he throws these ideas together, yeah. and he backs them up with, the, the latest facts. So, um, it's talking about due to some quirky genetic mutation, the Catholic Church has survived for centuries not by passing on the celibacy gene, but from one pope to the next. And this they talk about genetics. They talk about genetics all the time. These uh, visual graphs, I love visual graphs yeah. using these uh, cartoons or symbols yeah. or something, cartoons in particular. This one here is very interesting. We've had stone tools for two million years of yeah. our existence, which is quite a long, a long period of time. And then the wheel, then that, and then the phone. Just thinking, <laughs> why, why stone tools is such a popular brand? Well, because people didn't, um, people were, were in small groups, and so they, that's like the prehistoric they, they, Coca Cola. They were in little bubbles. They were in little bubbles, and in Coca Cola bubbles. No, they didn't communicate with each other. Yeah. All right, someone's complaining. And then he goes through history. They always do, don't they? Um, and then, you know, what's this? This is the sapiens versus the, 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 the Neanderthals, you know? And of course... The Thanderdals. <laughs> Neanderthal. The, the Neanderthals. Neanderthals. Yeah. yeah. And of course, they have bigger brains than the sapiens. Mm. 
but it's what the brains did with their. Yeah, we only got little puny brains, but yeah, compared to Neanderthals, are, yeah. Yeah, but we got our smarts. So he talks like about smartphones. he talks about so the cavemen, uh, people believed in this lion god, right? Yeah. And now they believe in in, in the god of money. The money. Mm. So you know, present you know thousands and thousands of years ago, you know. And this, this happens all the time in this book. And then it goes system into... System of value and... Um, yeah. And then they go in, into cultures. Oh. Um, and then, it, then, then it, they go to the circus. Coming soon in Sapiens, he, he turns it into a circus. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, that's St Paul on the road, road to Damascus who's struck down. Yep. Um, you know, um, he talks about, you know, how did you, our stone ancestors live? Come and have a peep behind the curtain of centuries. And he goes on, you know, 3,000... What was sex like in the Stone Age? <laughs> so guys are looking through a, a keyhole. Did they have ceremonies, moral codes, sports, competitions, and religious rituals? Did they fight wars, you know? Mm. And then that's Sex, Lies, and Cave Paintings, which is based on Sex, Lies, and Videotape, wasn't it, that mm. film? So where, where is he now? He's in Rio. He goes to Rio, right? Boulevard de Rio, yeah. He goes to Rio, and he goes to a conference. It's all these jokes about visual gag so he meets this lady again they go back to the conference and um, they're picked up uh, and she's talking about the past and she just as she talks about the past they're in the past and they just walk through the past you know this is how the story's told um, so he goes to take an apple off the tree or something and here he is taking an apple out of the machine the store yeah well or the, apple juice yeah um, and then um, this is a comment on Charlie Chaplin and... Um, modern World. Yeah, the Modern World, that's right. And then they go over to this conference place. Yeah. And he's reading a comic. He's reading this comic, which yeah. we're going back to them. And it's about, like, she's eating uh, apple. Apples, yeah. Or, or collecting the fruit. She gets really big. <laughs> 3,000 years later, she opens the fridge. And that's like the movie star Fred Flintstone. That's right, yeah. Um, and so, uh, anyway, so they get to the conference, which is an action, 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 actual place. Right. And there's all these people. He's a French guy who's experts on, on, on caves. And we, we go to caves. Looks like the opera singer from um, Tintin. This guy. Mm. No, that's a woman. That's yeah. a bloke. I know, but looks he's a so priest actually. He's a priest. Right. And oh. then they're given this talk about the Stone Age, and there's a there's a typical family. Yeah. And he says, excuse me, but why would you start your conference with such a pointless question? Because he says, um, um, what did it... He, he, he represents people who don't believe in science, basically. Right. And when they start um, getting stuck into early religions and all that sort of stuff, and what, what they really were... Scheherazade. He can't, he, can't, he can't... And they actually walk out. Oh. Um, and it's, you know... So, what's this? Brother, father, child, aunt, stepfather, sister, grandfather, grandmother, uh, uncle. They're, they're connections, you know? Right. Some children are raised by a single mother. Actually, what they're doing, which upsets this bloke, is that they're talking about how the family, the history of the family, because it's not always just mum and dad and two kids, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, the nuclear family. And so they're all being brought up. You know, different diff kinds of family that's connections. That's right. Uh, through the, you know, you know, yeah. it takes a village to raise a, a, a child. Sure. And they talk about how monkeys do it, right? Yeah. And then it goes back to early humans, how they're, they're taught stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, then, um, what's this? Praying, romance, what's this? Nowadays, a typical member of our affluent society will use several million artefacts over the course of his or her life. Um, this could be for eating or playing, romance. So he talks about artefacts because actually that's how they know about the past because of artefacts. They show sure. things. Yeah. And so we go to Australia and here they are. Um, they're, they're the British landing and meeting the Australians and, um, and he puts things in their mouth and stuff. It's really good. It's, it's a great, it's a great ride. This book. Um, this is the difference between Oxford and Great Cambridge. <laughs> um, and then they show this film, Life in the Stone Age. So they I'm show sure this. this is terribly funny and poignant, but I, I don't get it. Yeah, well, we haven't got time. I've uh, got to rush through this bloody thing. 
Um, so this is the Stone Age, and Beautiful they colours. basically came. Everybody went from here to here, and some of them went to Australia. Yeah, but that bridges. hasn't been proved yet. The land bridges? No, that the, the, the abri that the Aboriginals came from Africa. It hasn't been proved because Af the, the 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 latest facts are that the Aboriginals are very much older than the, this land mm. bridge. You know. Um, anyway, so it's it's and he talks about how not everything is fact because you know they're finding out new stuff all the time and so he gets through this film the end and then he talks about the present day and the future that with the arrival of agriculture everything changed mm. and then you know um, the future and so all these people who represent different aspects of the arguments he's using in the book these all represent things so he's he's the He's the paleontologist who's a French priest who takes them to the French caves. Right. Anyway, so... So here we are in the, the early caves and how they left their, their old people to die. If they were sick, they let, let them to die. And um, they found out that these people were so-called really brutal and all that sort of stuff, but the more you find out about them and read between yeah. the lines and stuff, you just realise, well, they're just... They're just like us. Yeah, that's, that's right. So here we are. I think this is in France. This is where the cave was. Where yeah. They, yeah. Look how high it's... I don't know, it's been pushed up or something. I don't yeah. know, but... So they found it behind a bush... And you know this stuff. You know this. We, we've all been brought up on this stuff, and this stuff's thirty-five thousand years old, whereas the Aboriginals have been around for a long, long time. This yeah. is funny because very interesting see, and telling this pictures. Is, this is called pollarding. Mm. The French they they really cut back their trees, and they make all these things shoot up, and they make them into sticks, they make them into brooms, they make them into fences. Mm. So they use the tree to produce wood That's of a different thing. You know. Smart. Yeah. But that's, I mean, this is in the bush. So he's, there's all this sort of stuff. There's, the more you know about history and the more you know about um, popular art, this book is fascinating. Yeah. These are inside the caverns. Yeah. So these are uh, paintings. There's some very interesting um, concepts about language and symbols. Yes. And this, this symbol here, they don't, they're don't. they not quite sure what that means. And, yeah. And, it, the, you know, he talks him. He walks him through it and talks about how they found these people with all this sort of jewellery on them, mm. and young, you know, and they try and work. It. You see, he's a, um, a grave. Yeah, they reckon this is yeah. This is what they were buried, and that's how they ended up. You know, and there's also a family. You know, he could have been a rich guy or something. They talk about um, societies. You know, from from this time to the Byzantine to the you know the, the Ice Age, everything up until the present day, and now we're in Africa, or we're in Australia. So here he is. Um, um, he's talking about how he finds this uh, head, this stone head, and then he says this could have been used in war. And here he is standing there, and then he throws it at a rabbit. So they're continually bringing in. Um, uh, you know, they're, they're playing with time, and, and yeah, and for instance, this guy's got a hole in his head. Yeah. Uh, but it could have been made by a spear, or it could have been made by a saber toothed tiger. Yeah. They didn't have bullets in those days. They talk about mass destruction. Yeah. Um, and, and a lot of this is also, um, uh, and they have these maps. This is where this happened. So, a lot of this stuff we don't, we haven't heard about. Only scientists have heard about this. Stuff. Well, yeah, but it's an, th these are buried in books. Yeah, but it's, so. it's an overview. It's an overview. Yeah. Using but a lot of these using... things are quite recent. A lot of these oh, things yes, are quite yes. recent. Using popular culture to sort of, I mean, this is about, yeah. you know, that's a great image, you know, sort of. It's a great explanation of yeah. uh, mankind. It really is. And here he is in the time machine, the classic. H.G. Wells. From the film, you know. The George Powell film. Yeah, the George Powell film, which is a great film. And it, it, what's this? But still it's vital to ask questions that have no answers. Otherwise we might be tempted to dismiss most of human history with a glib nah. The people who lived back then didn't do anything important. Um, yeah, because we, with our computer age, we think we know everything, but mm. we don't. And up next in Sapiens, so intercontinental serial killers. Mm -hmm. So this is a, 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 a detective, detective. A, 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 a black uh, American uh, detective, yep. and this is her case. 
the sapiens, and these are all the people she killed, uh, that the sapiens have killed. And they're talking about how all the animals in different countries go um, extinct because of the sapiens. And like, as soon as they get to a new country, well, bam. Neanderthals. No, the sapiens. Oh, you mean the animals? No, the sapiens are people. Yeah, I know that. But they kill all the animals and they, they, they and knock off everybody. Yeah, yeah, they knock them all off. And yeah. so this becomes a detective story, right? Right. And so in Australia, for instance, when the sapiens turned up, mm. all the big uh, megafauna disappeared. Yeah. Just disappeared overnight, you know? And then what happens is that she goes to prove this. So there they are, they're the sapiens, they're in jail, right? And, and she, she, um, she interviews them. And then she shows them this film about the first footprints and all that sort of stuff. And as soon as they turn up, everything starts going like, you know, all these, people, all these huge uh, the animals large, in Australia, yeah. they just disappear. And this is, this is the size of the sapiens and, you know, they had huge, cuddly, big koala bears, etc. And all these animals disappeared within about 30,000 or less than that, about 10,000 years mm. of being in Australia. And then... That, well, the, that's... Yeah, then he's th there, the sapiens... Because they were yummy, probably. <laughs> Yeah, but they didn't have no... Anyway, the point is, then their lawyer, the sapiens lawyer turns up and, oh God, you know, not Abdemski. So he's now fighting for the argument that the sapiens didn't do it, right? Mm. He's their lawyer. And then, so they, she... Oh, that's his book. Yeah, she quotes stuff. Yeah. And then he, he can see him, he's, 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 he doesn't believe a damn thing, you know? Because mm. he's a lawyer and, he's, and they talk about how everything went extinct because of the sapiens turning up, including the everything, you know, here they are dead. Um, and so, okay, so they get in a plane to prove the argument. So they get into this and they drive to the airport and they fly through time. They land in, in the past. This is in Australia. Right. And see, the, and they're standing here watching while the sapiens are killing these things. And then, you know, um, and because she's a, a genet geneticist, she gives her, her, her t part of the story. Right. And so it's, it, it becomes Oop. like, it's like a television show where the lawyer, so the lawyer becomes such an important person in the last, say, 20 years in, the tele, in, in television shows. The, these uh, dodos were extinct because of their deliciousness. Well, yeah, but, yeah, but they, they couldn't run. They had no defence. Mm, but they're and, also delicious. Yeah, so here we are. Australia, there's a plane flies from Australia to Siberia, you know, in this little plane. You know, as you do. A, as you do. And, you go, and then they're in Siberia and, you know... And, and um, anyway, uh, this goes on. They oh, get, yeah, the mammoth. Yeah, and they, they kill all the mammoths off. Yeah. And then the, the land bridge, and then, you know, and then yeah. the plane yeah. keeps flying through. Alaska. The plane keeps flying through and lands in, in um, Siberia, colonised the thick thighs of the eastern United States. Mm -hmm. The descendants of the Siberians colonised. Yep. And then, um, so there's the, the Indians who live in the... The, the, the Pueblos. That's right, that's right. Yeah, good, not bad. Uh, so and down into the Amazon, and then yeah, where people Look went. Look how far they went down there. So this plane keeps the going, Falklands, you know, where the penguins live, <laughs> and sheep, <laughs> and Margaret Thatcher. Los Los Malvinos. Margaret Thatcher's. They call it Los ghost. Malvinos in um. It's haunted in South by America. Margaret Thatcher. Why would you go there? Los Malvinos. So anyway, so then we talk Los about. Uh, so it goes on about extinction big time, you know. Yeah. And, and, and all over the world, then they fly back to America. Oh, there they are, they're flying back to America. Some lovely panels here, by the way, you know, like yeah. you, speeding through it. Yeah, and but I mean, very, just... Very, very interesting. This is like, um, this is a very interesting book. It, it the is. moments of it, like Tintin, it reads yes, really, like really well. pages like that, I mean, you get a feeling of time. Yeah. Just a great, you know. It's very inventive. I, so, I love this. So they come back to America, and here's their lawyer, and they have a court case, right? Oh, great book. The court case, and then, you know, Exhibit A and all that sort of stuff. And I wonder if they're going to bring up the uh, famous... It'd be, um, a, it'd be a great animated feature. States. It'd be a great animated feature. So this is the audience, and you've got Liberty in here. And who's that? I mean... Oh, they're, they're the other There's characters. the dollar people. Yeah, yeah, different people. And then, so, you know, the Cook Islands, he talks about the whole history of the world. And then the Galapagos, Galapagos. you know... And then um, these people have done, you know, this, you know, and so the judge has to figure out what's happening. And this is the this the is the lawyer? witness for the. No, it's not the prosecution. He's, these are the defendants, you know. Uh. And so the the judge actually says we're all. Uh, he says we're all we're all sapiens. We're all sapiens. 
Mm. He's just saying, we're all of us. It's all of us. We're all to blame. It's not just these people. It's not so just that these... That is... That's is, right. Um, We've all done it. Closing yeah. remarks. And so all these symbols, the, the Nazi guy and the money guy and the future guy, they're all sort of... They're all involved in it. And, of course, that's straight out of... of um, that's straight out of... Uh, is it Manhattan, the film by Woody, El uh, Woody um, Allen? Okay. Yeah, and then that. and so that's how it finishes because um, the, the the it's left up in the air about the, 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 whether the sapiens should be condemned or not because we're all sapiens. Right. And then coming soon in sapiens, this is the next book. This is about society's to blame. This is the worry. We'll be charging them too. This is about the agricultural uh, revolution, mm. and and also that's the second book. So it's just an incredible Ooh. book, and he's written these three books. Um, his last book is called 21 Lessons for the 21st Century, uh, Homo Deus, A Brief History of Tomorrow, and Sapiens, A Brief History of Humankind. And I, I, I recommend all these three books. So are they all comics as well? No, they're just the books. They're just the books. But this is the only I mean, this is a very valuable, important this is, book how, when because... This made? Because as I, this would make come a great out of, Netflix. It come out of yeah, it'd make a great okay, animation Netflix thing. This. It come out about I think about five, six years ago. Oh, but it's important because awesome. at the time where we are now with the evolution of technology, we are yeah. at at the most important On the brink of metaverse. That's right, that's right. And this is why this book's so great, because not only does it talk about the future mm. and its implications, it talks about the past and how yeah. we got where we are. So it's an overview. Yeah. So and it is a phenomenal bestseller and He's a historian. He's not just yeah. a guy who's sh shooting off his mouth. He's a historian. Yeah. And he backs it all up with the latest facts. It's a but, great uh, book. Yeah, I was, I was impressed. It's a great with some book. of the latest facts. They're very um, yeah. interesting, especially since they... Uh, anyway, so this is volume one. Found new caves. And yes, the phenomenal bestseller. And it's got some great rays at the back. I mean, um, Natalie Portman, <laughs> one of my favorite writers and thinkers. He will blow your mind. And with how he tells how human history looks in the future, uh, Barack Obama, what it makes it so interesting and provocative is that because it's such a condensed, sweeping history, it talks about core things that have allowed us to build this extraordinary civilization that we take for granted but weren't a given. It gives you a sense of perspective on how briefly we have been on this earth. Bill Gates and the Financial Times. What did Bill say? Harari tells our history in such an approachable way that we'll all have to, a hard we'll, we'll all have a hard time putting it down. I would recommend this book to anyone who's interested in the history of future of our species. And this book, because it's been turned into a graphic novel, mm -hmm. it's going to—I don't think it'll sell as many as the book, but a lot of people who would never read the book will receive this book, and, and the librarians the will have multiple copies. It's a very important book, anyway. Well, thank you for bringing that to our attention. It's wonderful. As one sapien to another, we'll see you next time. Absolutely. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for the sour persimmons, cousin.